I would like to talk about a game that has been very important in my life that released just over a decade ago, and that game is Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U. It was announced 11 years ago on an E3 trailer, and when I first saw it, I was really excited. First of all, the anti-gravity looked really amazing. It looked like it was the funnest thing in the world, and then I remember watching the trailer all that summer, impatiently waiting for the game to come out in the next year. I remember when I was out with my family on vacation, I told my mother about it and I was like, mom, we need to get this game. And she was like, Matt, shut up, wait. <laughs> Fast forward to 2013 and I was in my last year of middle school and I was out on the soccer field playing soccer in gym class and I remember talking to a classmate of mine going on about how yeah Mario Kart is coming out today I can't wait to go back home and play it and just being so excited and I got home finally and I played the hell out of it so how does it hold up uh let's let's jump it let's start our engine let's rev out it. let's begin motors motors go okay that was, that was a good take, I'm gonna keep that in. When Mario Kart 8 initially came out and you start up race, the first thing you realized was the lack of a mini-map. The mini-map by itself isn't that crucial, but at the same time it is. It's just when you notice it not there, it kinda takes away from the full experience. They did obviously add it as time went on, but this is just a little nitpick. I just think the map in Mario Kart is kind of a staple of the series. It kind of does show you where everyone is. I think it definitely peaked in GameCube because GameCube, it showed literally where it everybody was and it showed the top four placements of people but i guess it was kind of slightly better in ds because it showed you the actual mini map and where things were on the on the mini map it showed the placement of everybody like it showed one through eight and it showed where everyone is and if you tapped on the screen then you know you saw where everyone was and the map. Mario Kart 7 also did this, but it was kind of uh, lacking any like actual animation, I guess. It didn't seem as interesting. Either way, the gameplay was very good. I think it is a little sluggish feeling at first, but once you really get into races, and especially 150, it can definitely pick up. I think this was definitely a chaotic Mario Kart, which I think most people want when they play Mario Kart. Also, keep in mind that bikes were added, and I think a lot of people were hoping that they would have been the way they were in Mario Kart Wii. However, they were not. They were kind of, uh, not good, not as good at all. So people definitely opted for using carts, and that was kind of the thing uh, going forward, the carts were kind of just the uh, end all be all, and you know, obviously in Mario Kart 8, snaking was a huge fundamental thing as well. If you knew how to snake, there was a good chance that you would have won a lot of the time. But if you didn't, you still had a pretty good shot. This isn't a Mario Kart where if you get left behind, you have no chance. You pretty much had a chance at any point in the race, especially due to the item system. The item system in this game was weird at first. I don't think anyone in particular liked it that much. However, looking back, and it still kind of is like this in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe as well, if first place or any place is far ahead of you, you will get better items. And I think that this is very needed. Though it is hard to catch up at points in some tracks, I think you having the ability to get mushrooms in third or even second place if first place is probably like 5 seconds ahead of you, it really does help. But like I said, sometimes first place is just so gone that like it doesn't matter at all. They got that far for a reason. And going back to the anti-gravity, it did work out tremendously well. It was a little wonky at times, especially on Mario Circuit, where you noticed a lot uh, clunky there when Mario was uh, anyone you controlling was kind of like doing that little jut jutting thing on the you know that that white bird thing um the white bird walk or whatever but other than that you know it it was pretty good it was, it was a nice track and all the tracks for the most part played pretty well eventually they did add DLC which added 16 new tracks to the game and it was 
actually insane because we had never seen anything like this before in a Mario Kart. There has never been DLC in a Mario Kart game before ever prior to this. So when Nintendo announced this initially, I don't think anybody knew like how to react. Like Mario Kart was not known for DLC. Some of the tracks included uh, other Nintendo IPs such as Animal Crossing and Splatoon for the Battle Wars specifically, but it also included The Legend of Zelda as well. And I think this really opened a huge can of worms going forward because now we have the Nintendo card debate. That might be a video for another day, but looking back and even myself at the time, I was just kind of like, um, yeah, that's cool that, you know, Link and the Animal Crossing characters are here and the Inklings are here, but this is Mario Kart. I understand that Nintendo wanted to kind of have a more of ancient characters, but at this point, we didn't have Diddy Kong, we did not have Funky Kong, Pauline, all of those characters. Crucial Nintendo, not Nintendo, Mario characters. So it was weird that they were kind of focusing on really just non Mario characters. Obviously, we got Dry Bows and all that kind of stuff, but I just think that Mario Kart is a Mario only thing. And I'm sure that is not really an unpopular opinion. It's not really a hot take. I do think something like Nintendo Kart would definitely work in the future, but not a Mario Kart. Not a Mario Kart at all. Speaking of characters, how you unlocked them was probably the least interesting thing in any Mario Kart game ever. You're telling me I can go in any CC class 50cc, 150cc, and still be able to earn characters. That is very disappointing. I remember just not even needing to try at all to unlock any of the characters. I unlocked them within like a couple of days. It was actually just so unheard of that you could unlock characters that easily. In Mario Kart 7, you had to go out of your way, kind of. I'm pretty sure you had to unlock them in 150cc. Mario Kart Wii was even harder. Just figure it out yourself. But Mario Kart 8, for some reason, for whatever reason, was just like, yeah, if you play the easiest cup in the game, you can unlock any of the characters. Like, what? What? Like, that's literally like the textbook definition of a participation trophy. Like, I I'm pretty sure you had to get first, obviously, but like, getting the majority of the characters in 50cc and 100cc and maybe a couple in 150, like, wh what? What was the point? Just literally just allow us to play 150cc, unlock most of the characters there, and probably make us go out of our way and go into time trials, or even battle mode for that matter. <sighs> battle mode. Battle mode in this game never really bothered me that much. I thought it was interesting looking back, and even then I thought this way back then as well, where the actual racetracks were battle mode courses themselves. And I thought, you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess you can do that. But obviously, you know, you really should just have actual battle courses in general. And I'll be the first to admit, there were times when I was playing online, or just for fun offline, and I literally came across nobody. I came across nobody at all. And keep in mind, when the game first came out, there was no minimap. So if you were one of two or three final people in the match, go like finding literally anybody because you could be driving in the same direction as the other two or the other person and you would never see the other person at all. You would literally just keep driving on the entire track and if you didn't turn around or they didn't turn around, you guys are getting nothing done. It's literally just gonna like, you're both gonna win. Like, there's gonna be two winners. Like, what's the- what's going on here? Obviously, in 8 Deluxe they changed this, but this is not 8 Deluxe, this is uh, you know, the OG version, so this isn't gonna affect how I feel about 8 at all, but I'm just saying for the reason they, you know, decided, even though they thought, and it was kind of interesting, they thought it was gonna work out, it did not work out. On paper, it sounds interesting, but when it's actually being played and it comes down to the wire, it's it's like, alright, this, this is unbearable, I prefer not this at all. <laughs> also in the DLC, they did add 200cc, which changed a lot. Me personally, I was terrible at 200cc when it first released. It was so difficult to control. I remember playing Cloudtop Cruise and then somehow I fell 
in the most smallest of debits, one of the first times I was trying out 200cc. It was so just weird and wonky to play on at first. Obviously now, innate deluxe, you know, it, it's, you got the hang of it. If you play consistently, you got the hang of it. But even then, my entire time playing Mario Kart 8, the OG, I was never that good as I thought I was at the time. I had my moments, don't get me wrong, but you know, I just, I, I was stupid when I played this game back then. On 200cc especially. This game also introduced Mario Kart TV as well, which makes you look back at replays, and I gotta say, it was really good. It was really good, especially if you were content creator on YouTube and you want to go back into the replays and just be like, all right, which will make a good thumbnail with this one? I remember when, you know, it had the YouTube feature, I used it and I uploaded like 30 second clips to my channel. They're all deleted because I was like, nobody cares and this is an entire waste of a video. But at the time, it was really awesome when they did that. It was like, hey, you want to upload your highlights? to YouTube? Like, okay, here you go, you can have the chance. It was just kind of something I thought was really cool at the time, and I really did enjoy it. Overall, this game was pretty good. I think when this game came out, it had to deal with Marco Wii, because everyone viewed Marco Wii as like this long-standing game, and we finally have our first console Mario Kart since then. People were like, is this gonna stand up to Marco Wii? Is this gonna go head-to-head -head with Marco Wii? No! But the next one did. It's basically the same game almost when it when it first released. Regardless, this was a really fun game. I have a lot of countless hours on the Wii U version. And I gotta say, you know, it's not the most perfect Mario Kart. I think the Mario Kart Wii game barely edges this version out in the long run. Maybe even DS as well. So I, I think I would give this game probably a 7 or an 8. Probably a 7.5. If you've never played Mario Kart 8 before any Mario Kart, I don't know why you would go out to this version when Mario Kart 8 Deluxe exists. That's the primitive version of Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart as a whole alone and as the series. But it really is interesting going back, playing online, which is something you can still do if you have a Nintendo, obviously. By the way, it was a really fun game when it came out, and I have a lot of good memories of it. It was really fun. And with that, uh, this was my first kind of review video. I have never really done a review of a game. This was all for my heart. I did not have a script at all. Uh, I kind of winged this entire thing, so yeah. Uh, if you enjoyed, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe, hopefully, and I don't know when the next video will be, but yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna do it. Thank you for watching. Bye.